Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video on Oblivion. And today we're going to start a new series that is about going in depth with these character builds that I make. Because, you know, I can make these builds, but I think going in depth is going to help a lot of people. And I asked you guys on YouTube, and like 97% of you were like, yes, please do this. So, we're going to go into the Battle Mage in depth. I don't even know what this series is going to call it, I'm just filming this ahead of time. So, to get started... The actual class you're going to be using, you're going to be playing as a Breton, and you're going to be having the Atronach sign with a magic specialization, okay? Then for your seven skills, you're going to have Heavy Armor, Blade, Destruction, Restoration, Armorer, Alchemy, and Conjuration. So those are the seven skills that you're going to have for your Battle Mage. And it's going to be, you know, a lot of the, the focus here is on magic, also, one thing I forgot to mention is your two um, attributes that you're going to be picking. You're going to have Endurance and Intelligence for your attributes, okay? So, when you play this character, in the beginning of the game, you're not going to be using a lot of magic, because you're the Atronach sign, okay? But, to build up your Intelligence, make sure that you make potions. Always make sure that before you level up, you've made potions enough to get at least a little bit of an Intelligence buff, okay? And that's going to help you in the beginning of the game. So magic, I mean, the, the most magic you're really going to be using is healing yourself, okay? Occasionally, you're going to use fire if you have, like, a super fast archer, but you're not really going to be doing anything. Your weapon gear doesn't matter at this point. Like, unique gear, weapon gear, at all like that. Nah, you're just going to be basically doing a hack and slash character, but make sure that you make potions ahead of time. Um, this guy, throughout the entire game... Your battle mage is going to be low on agility and speed. So they're going to be a little bit of a slower character, but they're also going to be able to be knocked down easier. So just remember that, you know, you're going to have low speed, lower agility. You might need to carry around extra fatigue potions and things, you know, fatigue potions, because you're going to have low agility and low speed. Maybe even buff it up if you would like to. Okay. And the, the beginning levels are just, Kill people, level up. Kill people, level up. Buff up your intelligence. Buff up your alchemy. Buff up your your swordsmanship, you know? Um, what I would recommend doing is make sure that you get... I don't, I don't like to efficiently level when I play this game. I think it makes it really boring. Like, I took a stealth character and turned him into a melee fighter because of efficient leveling. But what I would do is um, level up your block to kind of help with the endurance leveling so you get a 5-plus endurance, at least for the first couple levels. Because I will say, at the beginning of the game, claymores suck. Like, one-handed weapons are the way to go in the beginning of the game. So as you go throughout the game, you're eventually going to have a lot of magic. And at some point, make sure, probably early on in the game, this is the best way to do it, is complete the Mage's Guild, and or not complete it, just beat it and unlock for yourself Spell Drinker as an amulet. So you get uh, Spell Absorption, because you're Nature Knock, you need to absorb spells. Okay, now somewhere in the middle of the game, what you're going to do is you're going to have a lot more magical capabilities, okay? Now what I would do is, if you can have a powerful enchantment by this time of the game, um, maybe raid an Oblivion Gate. You know, it's very good, It's in my opinion, it's very good to save Oblivion Gates to the very end, but maybe grab yourself an enchanted sword. Uh, you could go do the quest for Chillrend. That's a good one because it does frost damage, okay? And what you're going to do is get a sword that does extra shock, fire, or frost damage. And then your ranged magical attacks are going to like line up with your sword. So for instance, if I get a sword that does fire damage, I want to have fire spells and also a weakness to fire spell. Okay, In the middle of the game, you'll have magic to level up your destruction. That's when you're going to get your weakness to spells. Okay? Also, have a second set of spells. So you don't need fire, frost, and shock. What I usually do is I stick with fire because you start with fire. And then I go with either shock or frost, depending on how I feel. If you get Chillrend, make your second destruction set frost. So you really only need to carry around spells for two sets of destruction in this game. So one more time, if you have a fire sword, get fire spells, uh, fire weakness spells, and then pick another line for destruction. With Restoration, you're just going to be healing. 
Um, what you can do is go through the Dark Brotherhood and get the Night Mother's Caress. That's an amazing healing spell. Like, really, really, really good. All right. And then you're going to have Conjuration here. Now, Conjuration, make sure at all times you can, you know, you have something to conjure. I mean, you start with a Skeleton, which is pretty good. But maybe bump it up to a Scamp or a Zombie. And what you're going to do in the middle of the game is when you fight, like, that harder group of enemies, right? Like, let's say you're using Steel stuff and the game finally bumps everyone up to Dwarven and it's a little bit harder. That's when you're going to bump out Skeletons and Scamps. They're going to be tanking some damage for you in the middle of combat. Since you're not going to have a sneak-based character, you're just going to conjure these guys up and they're going to be there for you. They're going to be tanking for you, okay? Because what you're going to have this balance of... Sorry, there's a lawnmower going off and it's really loud. But you're going to have this balance, okay? Your alchemy skill in the middle of the game is going to get pretty high. So you're going to be able to make restore health potions, or restore magic potions, or restore fatigue potions. Those are your three sets of potions you're going to be using. And what you're going to decide for yourself is say, okay, I can heal myself, but right now in combat I'm taking too much damage to make it work. So I'm going to conjure stuff to tank for me. So in the middle of the game, you're going to have to pick whether or not you want stuff to tank for you, so you don't have to spend all this magic healing, or you're going to have to pick healing over conjuration. Now, how you determine this is how good are you at balancing magic, okay? Is do you want to balance out magic, or are you kind of that person that likes to use magic more? If you like to use magic, level up your conjuration because that's always going to hit you with a max intelligence, level 5 every time you level up, okay? If you don't like that and you kind of, you know, you can be conservative with magic, take your time, then focus on restoration. That extra willpower is going to actually help you with some fatigue as well, so it's going to help your melee game a lot. And there's no real unique spells you need at this game, just as long as you have those weaknesses and the conjuration, some healing spells. Your weapons at this point, if you want to use a claymore, you can. Uh, if you want to stick to one-handed and shield, do it. Whatever you really want to do. And your playstyle is going to start to include magic. So in the beginning of the game, you're not going to have magic. At this point in the game, uh, you should have already unlocked the mages guild so you can make custom spells. And you're going to be including magic more and more into your combat. At some point in the middle of the game, enemies are also going to be able to swing at you with their swords and make you drop. You know, paralysis. Well, it's not really paralysis, it's a knockdown. Make sure you have spare healing potions. Like, the healing potions, it's very important that you have potions, okay? Because you're going to have a powerful healing spell. But if you're knocked down, you can't cast it. So don't go for a powerful healing spell. Go for healing potions. Either the ones that insta-heal you, or the ones that do like 13 health for 10 seconds. Anything like that, okay? And this is where we move into the late game. Now, by the time you hit late game... We're going to work on some enchants. Me as an Oblivion player, I don't like to enchant my gear custom until the very, very end of the game where I have like either Diedrich or Glass, okay? So the first thing that you're going to do is you're a Breton, so you have a 50% magic resist, which should have been helping you absorb spells, okay? The Atronox sign should help. The Spell Drinker amulet should help. Um, whatever. Now... You're going to have your gear, okay? And what you're going to do is make sure you can get, use one or two or however many pieces of gear you need with black soul gems, okay? Always use the black soul gems to make it so you have 100% magic resist. If you can get that, you're invincible to magic, basically. I think you actually are. I don't, I've never had a, a, a quite that high. I've had a very high resist magic character, but never 100. Which means that you have infinite magic. Hey everyone, I wanted to jump in at the end of this video, or wherever I decide to put this. I remembered that the mundane ring is like the ring you need for resist magic. It does resist magic 50% and reflect spell 35%. It's like, in my opinion, one of the best rings in the game. I, have a, I even have a character that's wielding the mundane ring. So it's a really good ring. If you get lucky and find this thing, literally... It is like one of the rings that you will wear for the rest of the game. What you can also do for this character is enchant a claymore and a dagger, okay? What you're going to do is 
the dagger and the claymore are both going to have high damage and chance. So I really like that. Um, you're not, I don't know exactly where silence fits in in the magic meta, but you're going to be using a lot of magic anyways. So if you can't get the 100% magic resist, get a weapon of some kind, whether it's a bow or a sword that does silence, okay? What you can also do is if you don't want to go the silence route, you can do drain or absorb magic, okay? Either use destruction or restoration for absorbing or draining magic, okay? Now when you do this, you're going to have your claymore and you're going to have your dagger, okay? Whether or not you use a shield is up to you. Use a shield if you have a dagger, okay? And you got to pick what you do to your enemies, okay? So if an enemy absorbs magic very well, use the dagger, okay? Because the, you're going to swing at them with a claymore, right? And if they absorb magic, that extra damage buff goes away because of the claymore, okay? So you're going to do normal damage, but not the magic part. But since the dagger swings faster, you're going to have a higher chance of landing those magic damage shots. You can also use the claymore if you're running out of health and you need to keep them away from you. That's a really good strategy too. Um, you're really not going to have much ranged attacks. If you want to have ranged attacks, go for it. All right. If an enemy has super high normal damage resist, like clan furs. Clan furs are just normal damage. Don't even do normal damage. When you're fighting enemies like clan furs that have really high normal damage resist but don't have any real magic resist, use those magic spells that like the fire and the frost okay that's where those come in and also with undead creatures that have protect so like liches are a very good example if you know liches you're having a tough time with them try out magic with them and you, you always have time when you're using your magic if you need time to think and assess the situation that's where magic comes in because with magic you know you're far away from them and you really have time to think plan out your attack and if they're coming at you and you decide to melee attack them, you've already done a little bit of damage to them. For your other enchants, it's gonna they're gonna depend a lot on what your weaknesses are. So if you're a new player and you really don't understand the combat system of Oblivion very well, and you're taking a bunch of hits, like maybe you just suck at dodging melee hits or arrows, or you can't time the blocks out right, then go with things that either give you protect or extra health. I would say if you're a new player, go with uh, physical protection because you're gonna have magical protection. So enchant the rest of your gear with physical protection. If, however, you're pretty good at dodging and things of that nature, go ahead and enchant your stuff with either strength or fortify blade. That's what I would do. And really, that's just there so that you do extra damage with your swords and or and you can hold more stuff because what's going to be very tough is there's going to be a point in the game where you don't have 100% magic resist but you need magic, okay? This is where your alchemy and your looting skills come in, okay? You're going to be raiding alien ruins at some point and you're going to be collecting welkin stones. Now what I would highly highly recommend is do not use welkin stones in the beginning or the middle of the game because they just restore your magic to full but if stuff like weak sorcery potions sorcery potions restore magic potions restore your magic a decent chunk i would say like 75 to 100 percent then don't use your welkin stones use the potions okay when you have super high magic and you still don't have those spell absorption and you're gonna need just instant magic buffs or maybe you're in a cave where there's a bunch of goblins but no shamans so you don't get hit with magic. That's when you're gonna use Welkin Stones in the game. So your character, they're gonna have a lot of health at the end of the game. They're gonna be able to do lots of damage with their sword. Their block skill might be leveled up. It really depends on how much you use the claymore. Um, they're gonna not be very light on their feet. They're gonna get knocked down. They're not going to be very fast, but they're going to have magic to really change up the situation. When it comes to Conjuration in the very, very, very late game, really what I would do with Conjuration is go into battle with a guy conjured. That way you get extra hits off on the enemies. Or you can go with a ranged guy just to shoot fireballs or something like that. Um, you can also rock some ghosts so that, you know, if an enemy doesn't have silver or anything like that. It's kind of tough to hit. 
or go with a massive tank like an Atronach. What you can also do is if you really, really, really need magic is uh, aggro an Atronach and that you conjure up and just have it shoot stuff at you. It's a good way to get magic back. Now, if you guys know me, this is there's blade skill involved in this game and the blade skills involved in this character. So at some, any point in the game, feel free to go collect Umbra. It's my favorite sword. Highly recommend you actually, you know, get it and use the soul trap on it. At some point, make sure you either get Umbra or a soul trap weapon or level your mysticism up as well so that you have soul trap available and get Azura Star. Every, every time you want to play this game like super duper serious, Azura Star and some form of soul trap is what you're going to need because your weapons are going to be running out of enchants. You're probably going to have, if you include Umbra in this, you're probably going to have at least three to four different swords. Depending on, if so you have Umbra, then you have your Dagger and your Claymore. If your Claymore and Dagger do the same type of damage, you might want to get another one that does a different type of damage. One of the things I briefly touched on in this video was Oblivion Gates. Save Oblivion Gates until as late in game as you can handle. Because the later on you go in the game, the higher the, uh, I don't even know what they're called, the Sigil Stone enchants are going to be. And that's where you can get some very, very powerful damage enchants that also ha last for a really long time on your swords. Also, get Spellbreaker. Very good shield. It, it reflects stuff, and I mean, if you're going to be tanking magic anyways, you might as well block it with the Spellbreaker. Okay? It's pretty dope. Um, really, that's it. Now, rings in this game, I suck at ring knowledge in Oblivion. I barely know any of the main rings in this game. Um, what I would say is rings that increase your strength are very, very, very good. At, they're really good. Or, if, you know, early on in the game, you can get a ring that does resist magic. That's a really good that's a good one. Probably the first resist magic buffs that you're going to find are going to be on rings. Um, that's really it, guys, for this in-depth build. I hope you enjoyed. It's a pretty long video. I expect it to be about 20 minutes long. This is all of my knowledge of Oblivion placed onto you. How to use the Battle Mage. And you know what? That's it. That's like my knowledge of how to play this Battle Mage build. I know nothing more. I don't know... You know, I know you need to get Welkin Stones, but I really don't know if there's specific caves to raid. I know you need to do the Mage's Guild, and if you want an Enchanted Sword to get Chill Rend. But, that's it. Or you can always go get Gold Brand from a Dedric Statue if you want a Fire Sword. Guys, what would you do to this build? What's your kind of, like, in-depth stuff you would want to do with this guy? Let me know in the comments below. That's really it. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you next episode stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.